Hello, hello, hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jake Lee. This is Jake Lee's Corner. This is my review for Real Housewives of Atlanta season 12. Oh, season 12, episode 12. Okay. I hope everybody's having a great weekend and stuff. Um, tomorrow's MLK Day. Happy MLK Day. Um, and stuff me. I'm happy to be off tomorrow, okay? But anyway, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. And my God, my whole J-Bird, J-Bird, dun-dun-dun-dun-dun, and all that goodness and stuff. Um, center yourself, okay? Always center yourself, okay? Do not forget to also like the video, to comment in the comment section, to share it on your social media, and to follow me on IG and on Twitter at J underscore Lee's underscore corner. Honey, buzz, buzz, buzz all around here. So let's just get started on this. This episode was really simple. It was like stuff with Eva, stuff with Portia, and then, you know, Tanya and Kenya. So let's just get it started. So Eva's still knocked up. Okay, still knocked up at this point in time and at home and she's just, you know, sitting around rubbing her belly, talking to Michael and the kids, okay? And she brings up the whole trip to Canada, okay, to Toronto, and she's acting as if Candy was out here putting 20 on 10 and lying on her. I'm like, Eva, does Eva have pregnancy brain? Does she just keep forgetting the things that she says and gets upset or thinks when people remind her about what she said that they're wrong? No. Eva, you can't be on here just dogging people and saying things about people on camera and get mad when someone brings it up on camera. That's the whole point of the show. Things that are said and done on camera usually come back up that you're on. You said things about Portia and when it came up, Candy repeated it word for word. She did not lie on you. She did not put 20 on 10. She was not being escalated. She was not causing problems between you and Portia. You did that. The things you don't want someone else to tell somebody else, you don't say them, okay? That's all it is to that. So, I mean, Eva gonna get ripped to shreds at the reunion, okay? Because when she said, you know what I'm saying, yeah, again, Candy was putting 20 on 10, and Anscad causing issues, girl, they gonna rip you to shreds at the reunion because it's gonna be all the... All the footage of what you said and they can't sit to. Anyway, she then goes on to say how, you know what I'm saying, they're getting the the oldest daughter, well, the only daughter, she had those sons, the daughter Marley, last name was being changed from McCall, her biological father's last name, to Sterling, her mom, and not her mom's husband name, and Mike, in all cases, is Marley's father. Point blank, period. Okay, you know what I'm saying? She brings up how Marley does not even really remember much of her life when they when her mama and Kevin McCall were together because at that point in time she said she left Kevin McCall when Marley was around two months old. She's been with Michael Sterling since Marley was around 15 months old. So Mar Mar girl, Marley as a one year old has only known Michael. That's her daddy. And she she says Marley does not know that Michael was not her biological father. Now this is my thing about that. I do feel like, you know, a person's father is who a person's father is. But I also feel like eventually someone needs to tell her that he is not her bio dad. Only because that's a piece of information if she get Because when she becomes a teenager and she starts Googling stuff or whatever, and all the antics of her father and her mama comes up, she would be upset if, she, if no one told her. So I, I do feel like when anybody is adopted or whatever... Or whatever, you know, a step parent or whatever. You need to be honest with the child eventually. I get now she's only four, so they, they may not tell her now because she's four. She's five. I don't know how old she is, but I, she's uh, like in kindergarten right now. Okay, so maybe not now, but eventually someone needs to explain to her. Yes, he's your father. That he he is your dad. But just so that you know. Just so that you know, it's this other guy who's technically also your birth your birth father. I think that's just the right thing to do for anybody to know exactly where they came from, okay? And I, I feel like the sooner she knows it, the less angry she can be. Because sometimes a person feel like, you lied to me my whole life, and it makes them angry. Versus if you tell them when they're young enough to understand it, and they get it, that's good, okay? Because she brings up how Marley, the reason they changed her last name, 
It's because Marley is the only person in their family who does not have a last name Sterling. Eva's a Sterling. Of course, Michael's a Sterling. The two kids are going to be Sterlings. And so, Marley does not like being different. And so, because that's her dad, you know, Eva said, you know, to her, the reason her name was being changed is because Mommy and Daddy got married. So, I'm like, okay, that's it. Okay, I get it is what it is. Anyway, so we do see them go to court and it's granted. Okay, so Marley's last name was not Sterling and Eva does an ugly cry. Okay, ugly cry was not and all that stuff. And that's it with them right there for that part. So, we then see Tanya, Portia, Candy, and Marlo go to the spa. Okay, little spa day for them all or whatever. And in there, they're chit-chatting about the little trip to Canada or whatever. They then bring up the old dinner. With Kenya insinuating or asking if somebody's man was cheating, would they want to know, you know, would you tell anybody? And that whole conversation, okay? And so, for the most part, Portia and Marlo and even Kenya was like, yeah, do seem kind of like, you know, Kenya was talking about Tanya. Tanya then said, yeah, I do think, like, it seemed like she was talking to me because she kept looking my way. And it was like little gestures that, that little gestures that Kenya was doing that made it seem like that's who she talking about, okay? But Tanya then said, but it's weird that she would do that and she would not just talk to me about it because we have had conversations about me, IVF, you know, the fact that I have one egg in the freezer. So we've had these conversations or whatever. So I don't get why she'd be so open to me talk, talking to me about my uterus, but not want to tell me about if my man was cheating. So when she said that, I said, that does make sense because if you can tell me that I should get my uterus implanted with a baby, okay, you should tell me that you see my man or someone told you that my man was doing wrong, okay? And so that's what Tanya said, okay? Now, Candy brings up how it was Cynthia, well, not there in her confession, she says, you know, it's, it was Cynthia who told her what the Candy lady said. It wasn't Candy who told her. It was Cynthia who told Candy, okay? She said, but no one has told Tanya at this time. Now, on Candy's, you know, speak on it, show whatever, she says, at the time of this happening, because remember, none of this stuff is anything current, okay? It's nothing current. She said, at the time when Cynthia told her it was said, her and Tanya wasn't like good friends. They, they were friendly, you know, would hang out here and there, but it, they weren't like, She's friends with Cynthia. She's friends with King. You know what I'm saying? They they wouldn't like that. So it wasn't her place to tell. Um I think that's a personal issue. Okay, I'll say that. She also brought up the reason she did not tell Cynthia the reason she did not tell Tane was because she said Cynthia told her off camera. Candy said, and I, 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 I'll say this, Candy made me mad later on in the episode, but I will say when she said this on a little speak on thing, I agree. Candy said anytime someone tells her something on camera, she feels like, okay, if you said on camera, it's free reign for us to bring it up on camera. But anything that anyone tells me off camera, I don't bring it up on camera because it's a reason that they told me off camera. I can respect that. Because you know that is it's true. If you tell me something that we, we not record, we not on the show. You sh you shouldn't have to bring that on the show and bring it up. I I get that, so I, I'll give her that. That's a good little thumb for Candy. Okay. Any so that was her reasoning as to why another reason why she did not tell Tanya. Okay, at any point because again what she was told what they were told her on camera, but I guess it is what it is. Anyway, Tanya brings up from there, well, you know, it's kind of weird because, you know, Kenya called me or whatever, and she said she left stuff in, in, in Canada, and then I bring it with me, and I'm not going to just bring a package here and not open it and find out what it is. And it was Kenya's wig, okay? So, we... <sighs> wig gate. You know, she's like, it was the wig and the charge or whatever, and I brought it here because I was going to give it to Candy, excuse me, to give to Kenya. So she goes and gets the wig because it wasn't on her, it was like in a wherever else. And so she brings it back and then Marlo, oh my gosh, she wear a wig. She be wearing that wig all the time. She wants had it on the whole time in Toronto and Canada. And it's like, it wasn't a whole wig, it was a U-part wig or whatever. Um, <sighs> no one, we all know Kenya has long hair. We all know Kenya has a lot of hair. I don't think that's anyone's issue. I think the, peop the issue that people have with this is Kenya is always saying or talking about other people 
who wear weaves and wigs, okay? she's she's We've seen her do that over time while also boosting the bows and how amazing her hair is, how natural her hair is. So my thing is, it's nothing wrong with anybody wearing, you know, protective styles and, and wigs to protect their natural hair. The issue comes into play is when that same person dogs or talks negatively about anybody else who has to wear wigs because their hair may not be as strong and healthy as hers, okay? Points blank period. Okay, so we had that whole thing. So, I'm like, girl, give me the wig, girl. I'll just give me the wig. I'll give it to her because Marlo then was running around trying to put the wig. Did you part wig? I'm like, oh my god, it was just messy. And you know, I'm like, girl, it is. And again, I don't think t Tanya was being messy. I think she was being messy, but I also felt like it was an innocent joke where at the table. When Marlo brought up the wig, Kenya made it seem as if Marlo was crazy, and she was not wearing a wig, okay? That is what she was saying. So the thing was, she's saying she does not wear a wig, but she had me bring her a wig back. So clearly, she wears a wig here and there. But I digress. Anyway, so we see Portia at home. I'm going to do the whole Portia thing. So Portia's at home, and she's talking to mom and her sister. And she wants them to talk to Dennis, because her and Dennis are now re-engaged, okay? And the mom like, Oh, is that right? Now, Lauren, her sister, is like, you need to just make sure that you are not all excited that y'all is back engaged. It's all excitement or whatever to where you do not um, fix the issues that cause problems in the first place. Lauren is trying to be sensible. Okay, she's like, Portia, sister, don't you get drugged back into this, you know, whirlwind romance that, that resulted in a, 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 a baby off rip, a baby after a couple months or whatever, and then an engagement. Don't do that. Take your time. Build this bridge of foundation. Okay, to do that. So we then see they all meet up at Portia's house. Portia has a whole little, you know, family meeting or whatever. It was going to be Portia, her mama, her sister, and Dennis. Okay, so but Dennis didn't say, oh, yeah. My mama coming too. I said, "Oh, is she okay?" So who do we have? We had I got I got a couple pictures I didn't put in yet. So we got Mama Diana, okay, girl, with her storm wig, okay, and then we have the sister and then his mama as well, okay. I didn't really get good pictures of them, but I just I got what I got, okay. And of course she's holding baby baby baby. But you know what I'm saying? This is them at the little dinner or whatever. And, you know, Portia was surprised that Dennis' mama was coming. But he said it was a family meeting. So, you know what I'm saying? She's a part of the family or whatever. So, that's why I have her here too. And, you know, it is what it is. And so, when her mama get there, Dennis said his mama coming too. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, his, his, his mama also coming. I said, great, that damn serious. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? They sit down, they eat. Okay, they sit down and eat and everything. And, you know, at first it seemed kind of awkward, okay? It seemed kind of awkward mainly because Lauren ain't for this. I don't think her mama or his mama is against it. I think they're trying to see where it's going to go. Okay, now Dennis, you know, I'm sorry for what I've done. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry for my, if, my infidelities. Um, I'm trying to take accountability for the things that I've done. I want to own my part and what I did to break up my family. Okay, I'm going to say that. He then said, okay, he went from from that. He went from that to, but I also feel like it's hard for me when Portia Mama has the baby and she got me blocked so I can't call her. So I can't call and check on my child. Okay? And I can't call and talk to your mama about my kid and all this stuff or whatever. And then... Portia was like, you know, well, it was a line. You know, the line was drawn because you hurt me. You know what I'm saying? And hurt me, you hurt them. Okay? So there was a line drawn or whatever because no one thought they were going to get back together. I said, girl, we did. You just didn't. Anyway, so they was busy holding me down. Okay? Or holding me up because I was real down. I was real sad. It was hard. It was hard for me. So they didn't have time to worry about you. They was worried about me. And he like. Okay, this is my thing on that. I feel like when two adults are a couple when they have a baby and they fall out, whoever is watching that child should not be picking sides when it comes to the child, okay? Dennis don't need to talk to Portia Mama about Portia. I do feel like if Portia Mama has their their child and he just wanted to see how his child is doing, I do think there's nothing wrong with there being open communication about the child, 
I do think you should not block the child's father from calling you about the child. But he should be aware. Don't call, if he call you and it's about Portia, hang up the phone. Hang up the phone. But I I, I don't get anybody blocking the daddy. <laughs> Portia can block him and say talk to my mama because I don't want to talk to you. Or have him call the nurse because I don't want to talk to you. I, I, I get that. Portia may have him blocked, but he should still have access to someone about his child. Dennis is a whole asshole. We, we, we know this. But you can't make it seem as if, oh, well, he should not be able to talk to her mama if her mama has shot girl. By I, I don't care. Anyway, Lauren, is, you know, as a single mom, you know what I'm saying? You knew what I went through with my baby. Did. I said, how he know? He wasn't there. I mean, y'all might have told him after the fact. I'm like, he wasn't, he wasn't even around when you were, oh, what? I don't care. Anyway, because what I went through as a single mom, you said, you do what I went through, whatever. So I don't get why you did what you did. I'm like, why do you think he care about you and what you went through? Portia didn't know this man. Okay, Portia had a baby with a man who she did not know. Why do y'all feel like, he, girl, I don't care. I, because it's, it's this weird thing of them not realizing Dennis. You know, he's a cheater. Dennis is who Dennis is. Period. Not, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not at all saying it's right. But my thing is, y'all are holding this man to a standard as if y'all knew him. This is what happens when you have kids with people you do not know. They do things that you don't think they're going to do because they, they, they do what they do. But I digress, okay? Portia then brings up how... And then, you know what I'm saying, no, her mama, Portia mama then say, you know what I'm saying, well, my daughter was hurt, okay? And I did not, you know, spend my life and I didn't want to wait till this time for my daughter to just become a baby mama. I mean, well, at this point in time, both your daughters are our baby mamas. And she say, you know, so she just another, oh no, she's just like us because I guess she's a baby mama. And so it's Lauren. And at this point in time, you know, Portia was too. And I'm like... Your daughter got knocked up by a dude she knew for like three, four months. <sighs> Let that go. Portia, you know, your mama didn't even call me. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know what I'm saying? I should have got a different, uh, different attention from your mom. You know what I'm saying? She didn't call me, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because when we was dating or whatever, and I was pregnant, and she felt like I was wrong, she would come and talk to me or whatever, and fuss at me about being wrong. So I feel like, you know what I'm saying, when her son was wrong, she should have told him about herself. She, the mama then said, I did. I fussed at my son a whole lot. Okay, I did not know at what point to come in and interject myself into y'all stuff. And this is something else I feel like this. This is also the reason as to why when you were in a relationship, you should not allow your family to know the issue. You wonder why? Because when you take him back, you have to have these kind of awkward ass dinners. And you have to force them to no longer be upset over what happened. However, if you just hadn't told them what happened and just dealt with it accordingly, not saying that she could have hit it because she put him out, but I feel like Portia's mom and sister's very much so invested in her and Dennis. They're very, and, and that happens. But this is the the down the downfall, the pitfall. I gotta sneeze. Um, do I? No, I don't. Do I? I don't know. And I feel it coming, it won't come out. But anyway, <laughs> this is the pitfall of when you allow people in your relationship. She got mad, told them what happened, they broke up, and now they're getting back together. And now she, Portia's over it. She wants to move forward, but she has to have these awkward-ass conversations with mom and sister. And I'm like, sometime, leave them out of it. I got a sneeze that won't come out. God damn it. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? At this point in time, you know, Portia, mama, I just want y'all to build a good foundation, okay? Good foundation or whatever. And y'all can't be up and acting like nothing happened because something happened. So, you know... Build upon a good foundation. We can see what where it goes from there. And I'm like, girl, I guess so. Portia and Dennis, to me, is a mess. Mainly because we were on, um, they were on, um, Portia and Tanya was on Watch What Happened Last Night with Andy. And they were asking her about the video of Dennis in the club late at night with them four women. And Portia said, well, you know, I'm just living life and working on me, you know, work, working things out. I Meaning her and Dennis, her and Dennis is beefed out right now. And she don't want to say that because she saw the footage too and that wasn't cool. So my thing is, again, Portia got in quick with this man and now she's having to deal with the things he's doing 
and it's affecting her life. But that's girl's life, okay? Move on to the next one, okay? And then last was the last, no, not last, oh, Lord Jesus. We then see Kenya, Cynthia, and Candy meet up for brunch. This one, you know what I'm saying? Candy brings up how she met up, you know, with Tanya, Marlo, and Portia, okay? And she brings up how, you know what I'm saying, um... They were talking about, you know, how they felt like Ken. Girl, they were talking about how they felt like Kenya was talking about Tanya with the whole cheating thing. I didn't say Tanya's name. I didn't. You didn't have to, girl. You didn't have to. Okay. So Cynthia brings up how because she felt awkward that Kenya was bringing it up, that she went and talked to Tanya. So Tanya knows she went and talked to Tanya the day before, and we see the full of footage of her and Tanya meeting up, and she's telling Tanya, well, you know, the little cookie lady came around and said this, 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 and this, or whatever, and so I felt the need to tell you, and Tanya was like, well, it happened. Months ago, like, yeah, y'all have known for months or whatever, and y'all bring it up now, I'm saying, but I don't really care, whatever. I'm not going to let Kenya tear down my house of love, okay? I'm not going to allow her to do that. People are saying Kenya is doing things because her life is in shambles. I'm not saying that people is, because her life is in shambles. She's trying to point the finger at anybody else except her marriage. I'm like, girl, it ain't going to work that good. Anyway, so, um... Candy then becomes another a, more of a bone collector, and she's like, "Yeah, cause she said that you know what I'm saying, y'all. She gave me this package for you with it's your wig or whatever, and she said she can't believe you know what I'm saying how, uh, what she say, um, <sighs> oh, Marlo was saying you know what I'm saying you wear wig all the time, and that made Kenny feel like Tanya was doing things." To purposely be petty or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I can't believe that or whatever, because I, I wore the wig for the parade day or whatever, and that's all, so I don't get why anybody want to come after me, mainly because I'm a successful, you know, hair care person. Okay. Can't even bring up, okay, and Tanya also said, you know what I'm saying, how uh, you and her would talk or whatever, and how you was all in her face or, 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 or kept bringing up, you know what I'm saying, her doing IVF. I can't believe that I was there for her. Okay? See, she's been fake. I said, Candy, this is the first time Candy did not properly say what was said. It wasn't like Tanya was saying um, anything besides, I can't believe that Kenya would not talk to me about things that Paul was doing or someone told her that he was doing when she was comfortable enough for me to talk to me about my uterus. That's what she was saying. She wasn't saying it in any other way. I feel like Candy could have explained that a little bit better or whatever and did not make it seem as if Tanya was being negative. Because she, she wasn't really being negative about that one topic or whatever. And I'm like, mm, mm, mm. So, at this point in time, not can you mad. I can't believe this Paul was out here flirting with some girl, okay? A girl who looks better than Tanya. I'm like, the girl, Cookie Lady does not look better than Tanya. Tanya is a beautiful girl, okay? She's a beautiful woman or whatever. So, can you, can you, marriage is crumbling, okay? Her marriage is crumbling, and I do feel like, People who marriage is failing for one reason or the other could possibly want to paint somebody else's happy relationship to not look that way. You have so much going on in your life. Can your husband don't even live in your same state and y'all always you your marriage is not in good standing. So you need to not be worried about what's going on with Paul and Tanya. Worry about Mike. Is it Mike or Mark? No, Mark and Kenya. You need to worry about your own marriage. Point blank. Period. Period. Okay. And then lastly, we do see Eva has a little name change party for little baby girl uh Marley. Okay. I say, okay, fine. And we see Eva's there, Cynthia, Candy, and Tanya. And they talking about what? Wig gates, okay, and how Kenya was upset that she brought the wig up. I can you feel like you know she's trying to be shit, girl. I'm like, why is it a big issue? Like, I don't get it. Cindy then said, Well, you know, it's not that she felt like you know, you, you know, um, bring it up was messy. She's like, She felt like it's because you were showing the other ladies, it's what was messy. And I'm like, Well, who cares? Who the f no one cares at all. I, I, I don't care, you know what I'm saying? Now, at this point in time. No one knows that Cynthia has told Tanya about uh what what the lady said. Okay, so we don't know that they don't know that part at all. And at this point, Kenya is mad at the fact that Marlo pointed out she had a wig on and that Tanya then had that same wig and like was kinda 
Look at the wig. Look, girl. It's so much of I don't care. I can't even really focus on it. And I feel like they said, she, can you really only mad because it was Marlo who pointed out she had a wig on. Candy and Cynthia both said they are fully aware that Kenya at times wears a wig. Everyone on the show does sometimes. Everyone on the show has either worn their wig or wearing, you know, pieces or whatever, or has worn their own hair. Kenya, in my opinion, is taking this too far and making this an issue. No one is saying, we know you're not bald, girl. We know this. But at the end of the day, you did have on a wig and you did deny or try to allude to the fact that it was not a wig. You did that. Because again, on Watch What Happens Live, Kenya was texting or not te she was tweeting or whatever. And she said, Tanya's a liar. You know, I never denied wearing a wig. Yes, yeah, when Marlo said it's a wig, girl, come on. Don't do that. It's, you made it seem as if uh, Marlo was lying. And you didn't. So, girl. I'm usually Team Kenya. Because usually Kenya is very interesting. I still feel like Kenya is using all this to distract us from the fact that she's in a, a sham of a marriage. And I don't care anymore. I'm dressed. That's it. That was all. Peace. Thank you.